Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pastor Glass uh, here at uh, Juniper Church. Uh, I am doing things a little differently today. Uh, we um, I'm not feeling too good today, so I wanted to at least touch base with you um, and try to, you know, at least have a conversation with you about some things. Um, I'm sorry for the late 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 start this is usually not an afternoon thing i usually don't even like to let you see me on the couch um but uh, you know things are a little different today so um, but i don't want to not touch base with you i told you this month i'm preaching every sunday no matter what no matter how i feel no matter how you know down in the dumps i am no matter what's you know like I'm not gonna let it affect me, you know. You know this this uh, pandemic has been hard on a lot of people, including myself. And you know it's, it's not just the uh, exchanging of jobs and stuff like that. It's not that you know it's it's a lot to do with you know you know you're always in the house. It's not you know you're you're self isolating. You're trying not to get people sick or get yourself sick. You know you gotta wear a mask everywhere. It's, it's it's just it's a lot right it's a lot of uh it's a lot of energy that is not all positive and man uh, give me one second i'm gonna go grab something really quick i'm gonna turn this this way real quick i'll be right back i'm gonna grab my microphone In real quick and try to get some sound going for the mic only. There we go. I know that's going to give me a better quality of sound. There we go. Doesn't look as nice, but it is what it is. Yeah, this is this is going to be the most casual service you have ever gone to today. Um, so yeah, this is like I said, not feeling too good. Um, you know. Not not feeling the best, but you know God is able. But you know during this time and season that we're in, it's easy for one to get nervous about the future and what it holds. It's uh, all right to assume that things are not as comfortable as you would want them to be. Amen. Um, you can feel hopeless on this, you know, in this pandemic that we're in, in this time and season we're in. And we're going into what is considered to be one of the most trying times of the year. OK, a lot of people emotionally get drained around this time. Um, you know, um, we do a lot of memorializing people around this time. You know, you have Veterans Day, you have um, Labor Day. You know, you have different days like that represent just, uh, you know, even the beginning of this country. You got Columbus Day, a foundational day, uh, you know, even though, you know, some people don't like Columbus Day. They say that he doesn't deserve a, you know, a holiday. Say whatever you want about it. It's a holiday. You know, um, we're going into the holiday season. Amen. Uh, although it feels like it's all year long, believe it or not, the biggest part of the year worldwide is this time of year, this fourth quarter, this third and fourth quarter we live in. And, you know, it's going towards the winter time. People are going to be inside more. You're hearing about uh, the mutations of the pandemic. You're hearing uh, you got an election season going on. You got you still have people laid off their jobs. You got still got people, you know. Uh, trying to figure out how they're going to pay their bills, even if they're not laid off. You know, there, you know, there's a lot of different things that are going on right now that can make you feel like there is no hope. You know, and on top of that, you got people uh, screaming that there is no God. You know, that there is no hope. That there is, there's hopeless people talking about being hopeless. 
Um, so, you know, it's managing the hopelessness, uh, you know, that it, all you have to look forward to is what you're going through right now, right? It just seems like there's no hope, there's no happiness, there's no joy, there's nothing to look forward to, you know? And I want you to be um, encouraged during this time that even though you might feel hopeless that, you know, uh, we don't have to feel hopeless forever, okay? That there might be moments in life where you feel down, and that's okay, okay? There's moments where you feel like panicking. That's okay, too. Um, you have a right to those feelings. See, one of the things that I find that is hard for us to understand is that it's okay to have certain emotions, amen. It's okay to have certain feelings. It's okay to exhibit these things, these natural um, desires, you know, like making sure everything is okay, making sure you're going to school, and making sure you're, you know, able to, you know, function. That type of stuff is okay. And excuse me. I uh, feel like I said, I'm a little under the weather right now, but it's just those things are OK. You know, but. Second Corinthians, chapter five. Verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. You know, we walk by faith, not by sight. We, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but you cannot lose faith. You know, I, I don't know who's going to hear this. I don't know who's going to um, get this message. It's going up on YouTube, too. You cannot lose faith during this time. You cannot lose faith during this time. You cannot lose faith during this pandemic. You cannot lose faith during this election season. Uh, I know we we're putting so much emphasis on the ele the election. You know, you 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 got political issues going on. You know, and we put so much emphasis. Oh man, it's, if, if this doesn't work out, this doesn't work out. We don't do this. This is not going to work out. Uh, this person gets in. It's not going to work out. Um, I think it's Romans chapter thirteen. I, it it kind of came to me uh, today. While listening to somebody else, it was pointed out to me. Um, every person is, is to be subjection to the governor of authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. You know, so governments are, are, are created by God. Why is that important? Why should that give me hope? Well, God is in control. That means that he's still, even into the, every step that is being made, is being ordered by God. Okay, that person is ordained for that position. You know, whether we like them or not, whether we agree with them or not, they are judged by God. They are judged heavily by God. Um, they are put into a certain respect, you know, and It is, it is very, very huge right now of us to feel hopeless because you may uh, root for Donald Trump or you may root for um, Camilla Harris and uh, Biden. Um, you might uh, root for your local mayor. You might root for your councilman. You know, it's, it's, it's such a trickle down thing. There's so many different layers to this thing. And this person may have direct effect over your life when it comes down to how the laws of your land are structured. Yes. But the hope is that you can still live your life. Your life is still your own. You still have, whether they say so or not, you are going to still live. You're going to still wake up. You're going to still take a shower. You're going to still wash your face. You're going to still brush your teeth. You're going to still go to uh, your favorite restaurant or you're going to, you know, watch a, t a TV show. I don't know if you're able to watch this right now on you on Facebook or on YouTube. You you have the capacity to to see uh, through, you know, social media, which means you got other things going on. 
Like the, as much as it affects you to see this person on your screen and they got they can affect the laws and maybe even start wars. Like at the end of the day, they can't affect your direct life. There's still there is certain things that you have going on that transcend even that. You know, God is is ordering their steps and yours, which means you got other things going on too. You know, um, don't be afraid of their behavior. You know, don't be afraid of you know what's going to happen to you because this person is coming into you know power. You know, be it Biden, be it Trump, be you Republican, be you Democrat. Don't worry about what's going to happen to you. If you are putting your trust in a man on either side, you are sadly mistaken. I'm going to say it again. If you put your trust in a man on either side, that means Republican or Democrat, independent, whatever, conservative, liberal, libertarian, whatever you want to call yourself. If you want to call yourself John Wick, I don't care. If you put your trust in man, that much you have you're missing it okay you're you're not going to make anything happen anyway because man is is fallible god is infallible okay god ordained government period he he owns government he he establishes government he tells government when to move he tells you when to move too you know, yes, we have free will. Yes, we can choose what we're going to do. Yes, we can make good and bad choices. Amen. But it's still this. This is still one of those things of you are going to be OK. You are walking by faith, not by sight. How bad things may look, you know, things are going to be OK. I know that it looks bad. I know it's, it's, it seems scary to you. I know you don't have your job right now, but you're applying, right? You're going out there. You're putting your name out there. You're putting your resume out there. You're, you're filling out applications. You're, 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 you may even have to turn down a couple of positions. That's a beautiful place to be in. You know, God has created you to be able to do the things you do. He has set you up to be in the, the position you're in. I know it seems hard to uh, just some people say, well, just take what you can get. But sometimes you can't. Right. Sometimes you're 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 nestled between the amount of money is there and the amount of money you can do. And it's like, OK, well, if I'm not going to make this bill, why even go? Right. But then you're like, OK, if I don't go, well, then that am I not showing faith? And, and see, you see the turmoil that you can, can create in your mind. See the worry and the doubt that you can create. You see where that can take you. You'll be stressed out. You'll be you'll be worried all day. You, you'll be you'll have pinched nerves. Your 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 back is gonna hurt. You're gonna feel weighed down. Your emotions gonna be all over the place because you don't know what to, what's gonna come and what's gonna happen. And, you, and now you're nervous because you forget that God is still in control, right? You forget that we walk by faith. The faith part of it is okay. The actual part is all I can do is do what I can today. If, and, and live logically, you know, work logically, you know, some things, some people say some money is better than no money. True. That can be helpful. You know, at least you'll be able to feed yourself, you know, but, you know, in the, in the interim, you know, you're trying to make sure you hold on to things. You make sure you're trying to, you know, just make sure you take care of yourself more than anything, you know, um, still get up, still take that shower, still eat that food, still Walk by faith. Still just keep moving. Keep, you know, live by faith. You know, live by faith and not by sight. It doesn't look good today, but it's going to be okay. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm supposed to do. I, I, I may have to make a decision that's not easy, but I'm going to keep doing what, I'm, what I said I'm going to do. I might have to just um, be afraid of some things, but I'm going to keep doing what God has ordained me to do. Why? Because God is in control of my life. You know, he's not going to lead me to somewhere that's going to lead me away from him. Right. He's never going to allow me to be put in a position that I cannot I cannot come back from. You know, that is the that is the 
the beauty of God. He's not going to put you beyond something. When people like to say he doesn't give you more than what you can handle, and that's that's not specifically true. Um, you know, because Paul said, you know, this thorn on my side is something more than I can handle, Lord. And he said, my grace is sufficient. Amen. So the, God can give you more than what, you're hand, what you can handle. However, he's never going to put you in a place where you're going to lose your soul. He's never going to put you in a place that's going to be contrary to to, him, to who he is. If he if he puts you in a place that's contrary to uh, who he is, now contrary things may find you, contrary things may work against you, contrary things may uh, you know may you know search you out, amen. But but he himself will never put you in a contrary position. That's why the Bible says if you're if you if you say you're tested, never you say you're tested by God. You know, because in him is no darkness. He can't test you. He can't test your soul like that. He would never put you in a place where you're going to choose darkness. He allows darkness to choose to to come for you. But that's because he's already managed that for you. You know, think about in Job. Job, you know, was about to be tried and God told the devil, but do not test his soul. You know, you can you can take his stuff away, you know. But do not tempt his soul. Do not test his soul. So that lets us know that God not only controls heaven, he controls hell too. You know, he tells hell when to stop. He, he tells hell to cease. And that's a blessing. So we know that if God is truly in control of this thing, yes, I have free will. Yes, I have the, the ability to get up and go. God is not my cosmic bellboy that comes at my every bank and call. I have to get up. I have to keep moving. I have to keep doing. I have to keep applying. I have to keep putting out my resume. I have to go to the interviews. I have to, you know, show some initiative. I have to show that I'm willing to do what needs to be done. Not because I want God to do to make a move, because he's going to make a move. But I know God's going to make a move. I know he already has made a move. I know he already will do something for me. Why? Because he's God and he's God alone. He doesn't need my help. He doesn't need me to prove to him that I can do something. He already knows I'm going to do something. He's already worked it out. The steps of the righteous man is ordered by God. That means he's already pre-established some things for us. There's going to be pitfalls in the middle of that. There's going to be caveats in the middle of that. There's going to be falls in the middle of that. There's going to be setbacks in the middle of that. There's going to be sin in the middle of that. There's going to be so much that's going to happen to get you to do the order that God created for your life. Don't ever feel like just because God has created an order that that, that just means that, it's, that his perfect will doesn't have things in between. Think about it like this. When you are when you order food, it's not just order food and then it instantaneously come to your plate. You know, and anything that is like that is 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 not going to work. Think about it. There's always a process. Now, in restaurants, you get to eat before you pay. Amen. But if you go to a drive through, you got to pay before you eat. Amen. And even then, even with both, you still got to wait for them to bag it. You got to wait for them to put, you know, make sure that the drink is right. And if it's not, you got to keep coming back and get the order. You know, you got to keep, you know, working with them to try to get that order right. So that way you get what you asked for. Amen. But notice that there's a process to ordering food. Amen. It's not just I ordered my food and now it's perfect. You know, no, it's I ordered my food. And there's this this stuff that goes between, you know, I got to like I said, I got to pay. I got to do what I got to do. Now at a restaurant, when you order food, you know, it's like I ordered a meal and now I got to sit. I got to sit here and wait on the chef to go back there and do his thing. I got to wait. Hopefully they prep their food right. And then I got to look when it comes out. You got to you, you. In fact, you watch other people get their food. Good God almighty. You watch other people get their food. Before you get yours, amen. When you, when you, when you watch other people get their food, you look at their place and all the stuff they got on it. It looks beautiful. Hot steam is coming off. You see the chicken and then you see the the meat. You see everything looking crisp and and the and in fact it may be the exact thing you just ordered. So you see someone else about to enjoy the exact order you just asked for. Good God Almighty, and you you see. That this thing and the, and the person keeps coming back and asking, do you need something? Is there anything else I can get you for this time? Would you like an appetizer? Would you like uh, some more juice? Would you like some more, uh, in some cases, wine? Would you like something else that you can go with? 
you know, just to keep you uh, uh, ready for that meal. Amen. Because because sooner or later, what you asking for is, is on its way, you know, and then as you know, it, you get closer to what it is you're looking for. You know, notice that when you get closer to your order, the, the, the person comes back out and says, hey, I know you're waiting on your food. I know that you're getting tired of waiting. Just be a little more patient. And what you're looking for is on its way. I'm here to tell you that there's times in our lives that we are waiting on God to do something. And we're waiting for it to come out. And we're looking for it to be right. We're looking for it to be perfect. We're looking for to be spotless. And you're looking for that great customer service along with it. Excuse me. But then sometimes you go and... The person who's supposed to serve you food, they don't even come with the food right away. You know, you've been waiting for a long time and you just want things to be what they say it was going to be. Because this is what you ordered. Amen. But think about it from God's perspective. Sometimes he orders our life and, you know, he's waiting on us to get to the place where he said for us to get to. He's trying to make sure that we get there right. You know, every now and again, he goes back there and checks on us. He goes over there and looks at us and, he, and we're still not there yet, you know, but a good chef is like that. A good chef is not going to just put something out to you. Yeah, he knows you're going to wait, you know, an hour. He knows that you got to wait a little longer. He knows that you're a little hungry and you're and you're ready for some, for some good food. You, he knows that you're going to uh, be salivating at the mouth and you've been looking at every, everyone else's orders and you're becoming impatient because you see something everybody else has, but you want it too. He knows that you're uh, at a place of like, you know, man, I really just want things to change. I want things to be better. I want to have what I'm supposed to have. He knows that you're looking for some type of like, uh, you know, breakthrough in your health. He knows you're looking for a breakthrough in your home. He knows you're trying to buy something. He knows you're trying to make big steps. He knows that you're trying to do good things. He knows that you're, you're trying to be a good person. He knows you're trying to make uh, righteous, uh, keep righteous behavior. He knows that that these things are going to happen. But in the middle of all of that, a good chef may know what his customer may need. But a good chef also is aware that a good that his customers must have the best. He's not going to put out a good chef. A good cook is not going to put out, excuse me, uh, just any old thing to you because he knows that you deserve the best. And he wants it to be the best. And he's going to look it over. When the food comes to him, he's going to see, is it warm enough? No, this ain't warm enough. No, this ain't right. He's going to throw that out. He's going to look and say, oh, these vegetables, they look a little frozen. Well, man, where's the fresh vegetables? Get the fresh. He's going to make sure those vegetables look nice and crisp. He's going to look and see, did your steak come out of the perfect medium? Or is it looking like it's a medium? Is it looking well done? The last thing you want to do when you ask for a well done steak is get a, I mean, you get a, a, a medium steak you just to get a well done steak amen or vice versa if you ask for well done but you get a medium to a person who don't like medium that look raw amen so they're gonna be like this is not cooked i need this to be all the way burnt you know and why they won't want that tire iron i have no idea but that is what they like that's what they like so anyway my point being you know is the is the is the is the chicken juicy is it is it is it crisp when you fry it up you know is is my ribs looking thick enough is because nobody want a skinny little rib you know everybody wants a big fat piece of meat why because that's what you ordered amen that's what you're ordering and everybody has an order and there's a, everything there's a process and in that process there has to be these things so when we walk by faith we're saying that God and we live by faith. I like that that in some in the in the Jewish interpretation, it says live by faith, not walk by faith. In the uh, in the King James Version, it says walk by faith. But the 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 other one says live by faith. And if you look at the New Living Translation, even that says live by faith. If you look at the uh, NASB, it says live by faith. And even in this one, it says we live in hope by faith. Amen. And we walk for, for we walk by faith. Amen. So some will say walk 
Some would say live. It doesn't matter which way you say it. If you're walking, you're living, you're moving. You're going to move by faith. You're going to live your life knowing that God has already ordered this out and that he's already prepared the way, that he's already got you together, that he's already put things in line, that he's already uh, just made your life better already all you all you're doing is making sure you're getting to where god needs you to be you ain't god's your quarterback you just making sure you all the way out so he, you can catch that hail mary you making sure you run your route right you know what i'm saying like and even if you're off a little bit don't worry you got another chance this just because we're in the fourth quarter does not mean that we are done amen we are not done the game is in order there's so much time left on the clock because how do you know because you still here talking about it if God didn't want you to be here to talk about it, believe me, he will call your name. There's, you don't know the day nor the time, amen? But God knows the day and the time. And if he allows you to be here today, look forward to the life that you have to live. It's okay to look forward to life. It's okay to look forward to, you know, how things are going to be today. I can't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to take care of itself. The air, if, if God took me in the next hour, then, there is, then tomorrow is wherever he is. So either even if he took me in the next hour, amen, I'm going to be where he's at. I have to have faith that he's going to that even unto eternity, he's going to he's going to take care of this soul, that he's going to take care of this man that he that he put on here. I have to believe that because if I don't believe that, then I know if he can't be right about that then how can he how can he dare say he ordered my life amen he is either one or the other either i believe he can take care of me through eternity and if he can take care of me through eternity he can take care of my life amen then he can properly order my life if 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 i going to believe that then i can't turn around and say god is not going to take care of me through eternity so he can not take through you know he either he can all the way Oh, he can't at all. And I know that sounds so like people say that's dogmatic, but it has to be. It has to be. It has to be static like that. Something in this world has to be static. You know, when I when I work in IT, uh, you know, there's this 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 part of the switch when you're you got you got for, you know, like whenever you're in a network uh, closet, there's a switch. You know, every company has one. You know, they, they're called data centers and they, they have MDF closets or M, MPF closets. Some people call them IDN, I, I, IDF closets. It could be any of those names, right? And all of those closets have some type of switch and some type of stacks of like, you know, uh, servers. And uh, there's it, it, on, on that on that switch, there's usually set ports for certain things now you got usually your public ports which are like kind of like for the whole office and everybody get their internet they all got their shared port that they got that one port that goes to that one desk that takes care of all of the information sends out the the signals gives the internet to everybody you know it's it's it's, it's supposed to help you to manage the office from from infrastructure perspective now when you get to a point when you look on that switch there's usually like a certain parts on it that goes to another like server. It could be a security server. It could be uh, the cameras. Could be the uh, could be the um, Lord the printers. It could be even the telephone. Sometimes you know it can be telephones that went to from one switch to another switch. It could be one switch powering another switch. You know all those things could be on there. But here's the thing that port that you see there the ones that are going towards everyone that are just everyone right those sometimes are what is considered dynamic they're always changing you know they, the ip address changes but then when you have like printers and security settings and stuff like that a lot of times they set those things what is called static OK, and static means that it's just that is static. It doesn't change. It just stays the same no matter what. Even if everything else on that switch changes, even if they moved every port, you can move and shift ports around. You can switch. Uh, you can switch desks from one uh, set to the other set. You can you can change out where locations was and where it was before. You know, you can do that. But when you have a set port. 
yeah, you can make a change and try to change it somewhere onto another place on the on the switch for a little while, but you want to keep it in the same place. Why? Because when you do that, those those things that are ordered for that, they are made for that port. That port is made for that specific function and that specific function. And I know I'm getting away from uh, one thing going into another, but I, I'm using this an analogy to allow you to understand that there are some things in life that have to remain static. And if anything tried to go and be on that port that ain't like it, it ain't going to work. And you can try to plug yourself into that port. It ain't going to work. You ain't going to be able to get on the internet. You're not going to be able to work properly. You're not going to be able to function properly. Why? Because that was meant for the printer. Okay. That wasn't meant for you. Okay. You, 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 you try to put yourself into this one place, but, but now everything, now the other switch ain't working. Why is not the other switch working? Because you took off the one switch to put it on there because you try to be fancy. You see what I'm saying? So my point is there are just some times in life that, you know, uh, some things just have to be static. It, it can't be changed. It can't be ever changing. It can't be ever moving. There has to be something that makes it, you know, that buttons it up. Amen. And I'm looking at this, this situation. I'm looking at this moment, amen, that we're in. And right now there's a lot of changes being happening. But the one thing that we can say is static is that God is in control. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That this life is going to have its own issues. It's going to have its own problems. It's going to have to be troubleshooted often. But you know what? God has not failed us. And we have to keep reminding ourselves of that. We have to continue to remind ourselves and stay encouraged. We have to, you know, be of good courage, uh, as it says here. And, you know... Um, God is never going to just turn his back on us. He's going to continue to provide for us. And I don't want to belabor the point. I don't want to keep you an hour, but I do want you to know that no matter how restless you are in your situation, don't let your anxiety rule the truth. Your anxiety is telling you that this is bad, that life is never going to be the same and all these things. That's your anxiety. That's your mind telling you that. But be honest to yourself. God has already walked out my life. He has already ordered my steps. And yes, I have all this stuff in the middle, but God is still in control because if he can go to Calvary's Mountain and fix my sin issue, man, he, I know he can fix this little thing going on with me today. That wherever I'm going to right now, if I'm on a trip somewhere, I know I got to keep driving. I may have to stop for some gas. I may have to, you know, get an oil change. I may have to get a tune up. I may have to do all these things, but I, I'm on my way and I'm going to make it to where God has it for me. I'm going to live this life that he has given me. And as long as he puts breath in this body, I know that everything's going to be all right. And hey, even if he takes my breath away, he still is in control of my life because I know that what he said is true, that he has gone away to prepare a place for me. And one day I'll be with him where the wicked will cease from trouble and the weary will be at rest. So I'm not going to worry myself. I'm not going to feel uh, discouraged. I'm not going to feel uh, low. I'm not going to allow myself to stay in these these dark places because even in dark times, God is still the light. That's, and, and not only is he the light, but Lord, he allowed me to be the light too. He said, you know, let your light so shine that the earth may see his glory. You know what I'm saying? So he allows our light to be illuminating. We can still live. We can still be bright. We can still be great. And I love you each and every last one of you. Uh, let us bow our heads. Our Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be alive one more time. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to know that you are always with us, that you have uh, walked out our steps, that you uh, have given us the strength the ability and the capacity to continue to keep moving. Father, we ask that you just continue to just uh, help us to walk by faith and not by what we see right now. Because what we see right now, it feels so scary. It feels so wor It's so troublesome. It's so tiring. It makes, it makes us uh, shift our body the wrong way. It makes us feel like we're we're not getting no way uh, better, Lord, but you, you are God. You know better than us. You know exactly what is going to happen. So, Father, just 
keep us, keep us, keep us in the name of Jesus. Um, uh, Shorten the time of these tribulations that we're in, Lord. I know that these things must happen, but we know these things too will pass. But Lord, whoever's standing in the need of you, Lord, Lord, just give them the strength to make it through. Lord, just continue to help them to endure. Lord, you, you, you've been with us through our wrongs, Lord. Lord, we know you're going to be with us through the right. Lord, you've seen us through our, our seen and unseen dangers. Lord, the things we know we was delivered from, the Lord, Lord, the things we had no idea we were delivered from uh, because you didn't tell us because you just, you just knew we wouldn't have been able to handle it if we heard it. Now, Lord, um, Lord, you know I'm not the picture of health right this second, Lord, so just help me to just, you know, to maintain um, in Jesus name, I pray. Amen. So that's this week's service. Um, Coffees in conversation. Um, again, uh, I'll be preaching throughout this month, all, every Sunday, no matter what. Um, even if, uh, even if I don't feel like it, even if I'm not in my best shape, I'll be here. Um, if, you uh, are looking for a church home. Juniper Church is a great church to start with. We are. We may not have a building at the moment, but we are still here for you. Uh, please do reach out to me. Please let me know how you've been. Uh, please put some comments down in the comment section. Send me some likes. Do some thumbs up. You know, let's let's talk about these things. You know, you don't have to be through this by yourself. You know, um, um, this might be hard for you today, but this would be amazing tomorrow. This would be an amazing testimony for you tomorrow, okay? So, and I want to be a part of it. I want to know what's going on in your life. Um, I want to know how I can be a benefit to you, you know, and I want you to know that Juniper Church is always here. Uh, we're here. We're not a prosperity gospel church. We're gospel-centric. We're, we're orthodox in our ways, but we're where we got we got a millennial feel. We are not we're not so backwards we can't be helpful. You know, we're no we're not so uh heaven bound that we're no earthly good. You know, I didn't used to like that that saying, but I'm starting to understand it more and more each day. Um but yeah, we're 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 here for you and I hope you will allow us to be here for you. In any case, God bless and um have a great afternoon. Um, Big Oxuchia out.